In this session, we are going to talk about how to write the discussion section in a research paper or a thesis. Now, if the results are not significant and this possibly will happen, so you have to explain the reason. First, again, summarize the insignificant hypothesis. Let's say the study found an insignificant impact of servant leadership on life satisfaction. Or the study found an insignificant impact of corporate social responsibility on performance. Now you have to provide the possible explanations as to what could be the reason. Why is this result insignificant, which I thought would be significant? Discuss any potential reasons for the non-significant results such as insufficient sample size, lack of true effect, random variation, confounding variables, measurement error or inappropriate statistical test. Discuss the implications, explore, explain how the non-significant results may impact the current understanding of the research question. Offer suggestions for future research. Now provide explanations for how future research could address the limitations of the current study and potentially lead to significant results. Now here is an example. Now if the results are not significant, you have to explain the reasons. Now contrary to the assertion and most surprisingly, the study found a negative relationship between servant leadership and life satisfaction. Now we expected a positive relationship. What we got was a negative relationship. The results are contrary to the findings of previous research. Now, which research are we contradicting? Here it is. The person-oriented approach of the servant leaders make way for safe and strong relationship within the organization. Perhaps a good leadership makes people enjoy work, but this prevents employees to enjoy other dimension of life. Now you are inclined when, when, you are, when your boss is supportive, helpful, building relationship with you at work, you enjoy your work. But it may take a toll on your personal life. You might have to give a bit of extra at work. Additionally, it could be asserted that servant leadership makes people more focused on their careers and less focused on their life. If the leader is encouraging to work hard, the employees may be happy with the career, but at the same time, he or she may get exhausted physically exhausted and might become workaholic and consequently it may impact on their life satisfaction. So this is the reason for a negative relationship, a contradictory relationship that we did not expect. Now here the not significant relationship is does not mean that negative is not significant. Here uh, this is a typing error you may call it. We can say contradictory results, something that we did not expect. In this case, the expectation was a positive relationship, but we found a negative relationship. Now, so if the results are contradictory, you have to explain the reasons. And this is how you explain the reasons. Moving on. Now you can use theory to explain the insignificance. Now, for example, a recent study revealed insignificant relationship between authentic leadership and employee creativity. In the discussion section of the study, the authors use the theory of psychological safety to explain the non-significant results. Now, how do they do this? The results of the study did not reveal a significant relationship between authentic leadership and employee creativity, whereby they expected a significant relationship. The insignificant rela relationship or results can be explained in light of theory of psychological safety. The theory suggests that relationship between authentic leadership and creativity may be moderated by psychological safety climate in the team. The study did not measure or control for psychological safety climate and this may have contributed to non-significant results. Furthermore, they have identified another reason. Additionally, the theory of psychological safety proposes that authentic leadership is more effective in teams with high level of psychological safety climate. Therefore, the study sample, now this is the limitation of the sample, which was composed of employees from a variety of different teams, may not have been representative of context in which authentic leadership is more effective. So there is a need for future research in this area with the right sample size and with addition of more moderating variables. And this is the reference. And then you have to discuss the implications of your findings. You have to report the practical implications. How does your research help the practitioners and researchers? 
For practitioners, you have to include a recommendation how to use your findings for their work. For researchers, you have to provide theoretical implications. Suggestions for future research. Now conclude again after implications, write the conclusion of your study. Now summarize the study in light of research objectives. This will help create or reiterate the importance of your findings to provide a clear conclusion for the reader. This will highlight why this study was important and what is the actual conclusion from the study. Now discuss any limitations of your research and present future research directions. Now limitations must be presented. For example, it may be small sample size or lack of generalizability. It is important to be transparent about your limitations and explain how they affect your results. And finally, suggest areas for future research you might identify new mediators, moderators and other antecedents or outcomes. Now let's look at a few papers as an example. Here is the conclusion. The finding in this paper is that servant leadership is a multi-factor construct now because the objective of this study was to identify the dimensions of servant leadership. So here is a discussion section. Again, you start with the purpose. Let me give you another example. The study is set out to establish the relationship between ELK and processes and PS. Again, the aim, the acceptance of proposed relationships confirmed an overall summary. And then you describe each of the relationship, each of the hypothesis that is being tested in light of existing research, whether it complements existing research, contradicts existing research, and then you have to explain your findings in light of the theory as well. It's better to do it hypothesis wise, one hypothesis at a time. And once you do that, then followed by a conclusion in light of the objectives of your study, a brief paragraph on overall conclusion, whether or not your objectives were met, whether or not the proposed relationships were significant, the study, a brief, a brief sentence on the contribution to go with it because that was one of the objective of the study to contribute to existing research. Then the implications. Now remember in implications, write practical implications as to how your, your study will help the practitioners and theoretical implications. What has your research contributed towards the theory? The, theoretically, the substantiation of the proposed relationship set, sheds light on the contribution of EL and KM processes in leading to project success. Now, this is the theoretical contribution. This relationship hasn't been studied previously and this was mentioned in the introduction. So this study theoretically substantiates the relationship and adds to the knowledge management and leadership literature by highlighting the relationship between these variables. Moving on, your limitations and future research directions. So here the authors have recommended a few more leadership styles, a few more mediators that can be taken into account. So it is always a good idea. Now that you know what needs to be included in the discussion, the best thing is read the discussions in your area and you will find out what to write, how to write, where to write. Thank you very much.